In this video, I'll show you how we can quickly create levels using just the floor tile assets that we made in the previous videos. Ooh. Hey guys, Adam here from Pixel Mystique. I make games and I help others to learn game dev. Subscribe now to get game dev tips, tutorials and inspiration. And hit that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload new videos. I've been experimenting with a modular level design system since I'm working on an isometric action roguelike game. In case you're curious, you can check out my devlogs for the game right here and in the description below. As I mentioned in my previous video, since I'm the only one creating 3D assets for this project, it's important for me to prioritize efficiency while also considering my game design rules. This tutorial is a multi-part series as we have a lot of different steps to go through to complete the entire level. So I recommend that you check out the other videos in this playlist to understand my thought process and my workflow better. You can find a playlist up here and in the description below. Okay, so we're gonna continue from our previous video where we've created our floor tile 3D assets from within Blender and we've then applied materials and textures and import them into Unity. Now we gotta turn these uh, assets into prefabs so that we can apply them properly throughout our project. So to do that, we'll create an empty game object. I like to reset things to 000, and then make sure that it's renamed so we don't get confused. And then before you do anything, make sure that the actual mesh or the 3D model is actually at 000 as well. And then click and drag it to be part of the child of the floor tile uh, 02 empty game object. And then we'll also create another uh, empty game object. And we'll name this collider. And then we'll add a component called box collider. And then we'll adjust this box collider to be roughly the same size, same dimension. Uh, I think it's four times 0 0.1. And this is also four meters. And then I think we'll need to reposition. Bring it down to 0 0.05. Have a look all the way around looks good so we've got our first prefab and to make it to actual prefab select the parent and then drag it into the project folder that you want so right now i've created a prefab folder to keep things more organized and there you go. This is the floor tile underscore zero two prefab that we've just created. And go ahead and do the same for the others. I've done that already. So floor tile zero one all the way to zero five has been converted into prefabs. And then we'll move on to the next step. So before we start placing the different prefabs across our entire level, uh, I would recommend that you have ProGrids activated and this will help with the placement of the floor tiles. So what Progress does is it will line up everything and snap them way more efficiently so that everything becomes very precise and organized. If you need help with Progress, you can check out this video I made earlier. And if you already have Progress, you can uh, start um, utilizing it by changing the snap increment either by pressing the hotkeys plus and minus, or you can adjust this value right here. Let's change it to four meters because that is the size of our um, actual floor tile, like four meters here, four meters this way. And then if you don't see it, make sure this is enabled and just make sure that snapping is also activated. And this is the uh, default uh, 000 placement of this particular floor tile, but we can go ahead and add another one. Uh, 
and just reset that. And once you start enabling the snapping, you can see you can easily move this around and it will snap nicely. Like even when you move up this way, move down, left and right, it'll all be snapped together. What you wanna do now is to place a few tiles to start off with and then play with a few things. First is variation, like so. And then you can play with uh, rotation as well. Once I've finished lining up these floor tiles. Oops, I think I made a mistake here. And this floor tile is actually not using the actual texture. Let me fix that in a minute. So to fix uh, a texture issue, what you can do is go back to the mesh folder, not the prefab, but the meshes, select floor tile number five, which is the one I had issue with. And then just make sure that the um, texture slash material that's being applied here is the one that is intended. If not, you can go to the materials folder and click and drag it here. So I already done the fixes. Um, off, uh, off camera so you see that now everything is according to the right color scheme and they're all using the same materials. By the way, if you're looking to buy some low poly assets, I would recommend you check out the packs made by Sinti Studios. I really like the way they set up their environments. They have some really good details on their models and they cover a variety of genres. Links in the description below. Okay, so back to the placement of uh, the different floor tiles. It's gonna line it up here. This is one row that we have uh, done. The next thing you can play around with, uh, apart from just using variations of the floor tiles, we can also play with rotations. So one quick way to do this is, let's get this directional light out of the way. Um, let's, you can select all this and control D to duplicate. Move them down like one unit. And then you can't do much with this because this is a perfect uh, floor tile, as I like to call them. But the ones that's imperfect, that can give you different variations, you can play around with their rotation. So maybe this one, we'll change it to 90 degrees. Let's change this to 90 as well. And maybe this one will play around and make it 180 and then this one we can make it um, 180 as well so just like that we have two rows of seemingly very different floor tiles now you can also then play with their um, positions so select the the new row and then duplicate again control D move them down one unit And then let's play around their rotation. This one goes here. Um, to make things easier and more organized, you could group them up based on the rows. So maybe let's do that very quickly. Create an empty game object. Make sure the location is 0, 0, 0. And then let's place these guys right here. And then we'll do the same for the rest. Uh, just for the sake of making things clean, let's rename this to maybe vlog. Oops. <laughs> I can't type. Uh, floor, floor group one, floor group two. And then let's place these guys in floor group two. And then let's just keep doing the same thing. Right.
So we were adjusting stuff in the new row, which is floor group three. And let me find the one that was missing. All right, so now these two are overlapping. So let's move this one here instead, swap it around. And let's swap this guy to be here. And then this one, maybe we swap it like this. And then the one at the corner here, I wanna swap it here. So now we can see there's a variation going on here, which is the variations of the different floor tiles. We then played around with the rotations. So we duplicate the first group or the first row, and then we just play around with each floor tile's rotation. And then finally, we play around with the placement, which is where you saw me swapping around with different floor tiles. So you can go crazy from here. You can even group all these guys and then duplicate and rotate the entire thing to create an entire room. Let's say we duplicate this. Maybe you can add another one here and then maybe we'll duplicate this one instead. Oops. Go from top. Arrange it here. And then already we can see a variation. I'm just gonna duplicate this to give you guys a better idea. So imagine if this has been properly <laughs> edited and rotated and you know adjusted to give a variety. You can already see a different shape for this room. So it's not just a boring rectangle. It could be a square, it could be you know like an L shape. You can even add more um, down here. So let's say if I just add another one. And maybe let's rotate this. degrees and then we can duplicate this to make another sort of like hallway or bridge to another area so then you can duplicate this bigger rectangular or a square to represent rooms and then add it at the end of this hallway down here or this could be a bridge as well uh, later on in upcoming videos I'll show you guys how you can add skirtings at the side. Skirtings could be in the shape of um, railings. So you can add like bridges. And then there's also railings at the bottom to add on to that illusion as well. We'll also add in some walls at the side, maybe um, playing with different heights or maybe not just standardizing it. We can just keep the heights all the same. Um, but all in all, once we add those other pieces, it will look more and more like a room and then these would be the connections between the rooms, uh, either in the form of a bridge or a hallway or corridor. So keep on experimenting and playing around this workflow. You can easily duplicate these groups around and start creating an entire level that's more complicated than this. If you want to download the project files from all my tutorials, you can do that by supporting me on Patreon. You can use my entire library of assets for your projects and you can participate in polls to vote on which topics I should cover in future videos. Occasionally, you can even vote on certain design decisions for my game project. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. It is due to their generosity that I'm able to make more games and more videos like this one. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more game dev tips, tutorials, and inspiration. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.